So this is Lionel Foster. I'm here with Gene Sterling. Gene is an Institute Fellow at the Urban Institute and co-founder of the Urban Brookings Tax Policy Center. Thanks for joining me, Gene. Glad to join you, Lionel. So Gene, you think a lot about the national debt and the pressure that the debt puts on economic growth and the social safety net. The CARES Act, the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act costs $2 trillion. That's pretty massive, but um, as I was thinking about people who could put that in context, you were the first who came into mind. So $2 trillion, how, how do we even think about the size of that? Well, first we have to up the ante uh, because the $2 trillion is just what was in the so-called CARES Act. <clears throat> there's several other acts that were passed of a smaller nature. and There's another one that's lingering in Congress. And we also have a huge revenue loss just due to the fact that people are making less money, going to pay less taxes. And we have some programs like food stamps and Medicaid that are going to automatically increase spending as the number of eligible people expand. So people are talking about a minimum of maybe $4 trillion or more increase in the national debt this year. And by way of comparison, uh, the debt, the deficit had been running about a trillion, a little more than a trillion a year in recent years, which we considered unsustainable. So now for this year, we're expecting $4 trillion plus. So we've multiplied that deficit for this year by uh, four times or and probably much more, much more than that. In terms of uh, what it does to the, the national debt, which, which is the longer term issue, it's probably bumped us up to about 100% of GDP this year. That is, this year for the first time since uh, basically the end of World War II, our debt, our total national debt is going to exceed uh, our gross national or gross domestic product. And uh, in a few years after that, it's going to exceed any number ever we've had as a share of our GDP. That is, even after World War II, uh, we never exceeded that uh, relative to World War II. And now I'm going to add the long-term problem that we've always had, uh, which is not the same as the short-term. The short-term problem of having a big fiscal stimulus to deal with a major crisis has always been something economists have argued for. You've got a problem, you pay for it, and then down the road, you, uh, you make, up, uh, make up the difference. The problem is our long-term fiscal situation is totally unsustainable and was even before we add this to the pile. So the long-term problem is still the basic source of our problems, but this exaggerates it, adds to it, and makes it much more difficult to be able to uh, orient our policies towards new needs, towards the next crisis, and as a lot of our work shows, uh, even arguing it towards working families and children who are getting the short shrift, uh, basically uh, in the direction the budget has been heading in the past. Okay, wow. Yeah, those are even bigger numbers than, than I thought. So, you know, of course, the goal right now is to just get through this public health and economic crisis, do what we need to do to make that happen. But at some point, we'll have to start paying for what we're spending now. What are some of your guiding principles about how we should go about reducing the debts we're currently accruing? All right, so let me speak specifically to dealing with the debt we're incurring this year, because I think when there's a crisis, a national crisis, war, uh, uh, pandemic, whatever is hitting us, uh, even uh, maybe lesser crises, but such as uh, major flooding or hurricanes, I think we should all share the burden. And it, particularly in a case as this one, the pandemic, where we're all sharing in some ways in the, uh, uh, it's, a sh it's a shared issue that we're all living through. We all should all share in the burden. But right now, the people who are bearing the burden are basically healthcare workers and the people who still uh, uh, stock our goods at the grocery store. Uh, the people who are still working in the factories. You know, I, I saw an advertisement by, uh, Angel soft that they're working day and night to keep giving us the toilet paper we need because of our fetish for stockpiling it. But these people are out there working, uh, and we know also that uh, that this particular crisis has had a particular impact upon lower income people and people of color, particularly if they're lower income, who are bearing an unfair share, if you want to, or uh, uh, at least an uneven distribution of the deaths and uh, incurrence of the disease. So I think we all need to share in the burden. And I think that needs to be made apparent right away. That doesn't mean we have to pay the taxes now, say, to cover the cost of the spending we're doing. Uh, but we could put in place something like a surtax that would carry forward to future years where we said, we are going to pay down the road 
for the money that we need to make available today. Just as if we were trying to finance education today, we thought it was worth doing and borrowing to do it. We still got to pay that bill down the road. And I think the beneficiaries of whom I will include myself of all the efforts that a lot of people are making need to share in that burden. Okay, well, so equity is top of mind for you. Uh, thanks so much for helping to put all this in context, Gene. Glad to do it, Lionel.